Hope you guys are ready for another episode of Double D's in your face. That's right. And welcome back to another episode of Toxic Masculinity, where we are here to entertain our fan, defend anybody and everybody that we so desire. We are just simply men speaking about manly things. So if we tend to offend you, you have your, your right to either watch us or not. Uh, but rest assured, we shall not lose sleep about it. Uh, my co-host uh, has been the last two times. It's been Tony Martinez st- sitting in for uh, the long and, and awaited Mr. The Predator, Don Fry. But we actually have Don back here once again. Like just recently, what was it in New York or something? When um, the guy, the guy working his job with a bodega got stabbed numerous times. Right. And then he defends himself, kills this guy, and he's the one who gets arrested. Like and then like, what what is this show in America where you keep but I'm not allowed to defend my life, you know this guy came in started out his wife tried to buy some chips that her card got denied he tells her to put that stuff back on the shelf, so she waves a knife around at him attacks the dude gets her boyfriend to come in, he attack you know I mean come on like what how is this guy getting in trouble for trying to save his own life, and, and we're and he has a job now he lost his job and he's you know has medical bills and all this crap going on. And because some people tried to rob him, like his message is saying what to the people don't, don't try to defend yourself. Who cares if you have trying to, you know, take care of your family. Like this is, you know, well, you know it's just the district attorneys are lazy and they're going after low hanging fruit, you know, and uh, that, that was easier than going into the career criminal. Yeah, just for the fact that the the, uh, the young man was basically trying to defend himself and defend the store. I mean, that's a, that's an admirable trait that uh, he had for just doing that in the first place. And that's uh, you know the the, the the again lack of leadership. A lot of it simply boils down to leadership. We don't have good leadership in our country right now. And you know, None. just you know, when when you look at smash and grab. Uh, you right. know, anything under six hundred dollars, or or is it a thousand dollars? I don't know. What they seem to keep changing the bar because it doesn't whatever it, it takes to fit what they're looking for, the prerogative right now of this. It's what wrong is still wrong, whether you right. steal something that that's cost a little bit, or if you steal something that costs a lot. Wrong is still wrong, and our leadership, or I keep referring to as lack of leadership. Yeah, they're, they have they're, no leadership. They're, they're they're not holding they're not holding themselves accountable. They're not holding people accountable, and, and they have to be. That, that otherwise it's just going to be just sheer chaos. But while this chaos is taking place, you know, they continue to do other things because uh, you know it's like the masses' attention are turned here. Now he always is like that magician, Abra. Cadabra, watch out with that other hand. It's it's reaching probably in yours and my back pocket. And they're not even being that slick about it right now. They're just being openly blatant about reaching into your pocket. They better be careful reaching into your pocket. You got a mousetrap in there. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Don't let all my secrets out there, Tony. <laughs> yeah. well, it got, it got me. So... Sure. <laughs> okay, at, some, at some point in time, Maybe we have to bring up a new segment, Economics with Dan. There you go, Economics with Dan. <laughs> Don, okay, Don, you've known me for a long time. Do you think I could actually get our 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 uh, our government get get our, our budget and our deficit back in alignment? Yeah, if you could get them to do it, then yeah, I mean, you could you could orchestrate it. You could have it done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people would not like my ways, my methods, but uh, would it get done? Oh, it would get yeah, done. Absolutely. All this, all this free stuff, all this free stuff would not be free anymore. No. And we wouldn't be, and we wouldn't be giving money away. And all these corporations that they're allowing to still work in these foreign countries. Like I said, I always tell people, like Trump or not. He was an American who looked out for America and Americans. Yeah. He brought all these jobs back to the United States. You want to make these cars or these parts or whatever it is in a foreign country? Fine. You want to bring it back and sell it in the United States? Now? Oh, no, no. We're going to hit it with a lot of tariffs because you took away Americans and Americans' jobs. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He, you know, he had the United States of America had, had his best interest in heart. Yes. Well, again, because, yeah. well, first off, he was a businessman. He wasn't a lifetime politician. Like most of these people, they've been lifetime politicians. Well, they, and again, yes, they, 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 they come out richer than they went in. He, he, he came out poorer than he went in. You know, he lost money doing the job. Because he loves America. Yeah. Well, again, yeah, you're exactly right. He didn't. I think he had to take one dollar. That's what legally he had to do. He had, he had to take one dollar, and that that's all he took. Mm. So again, the fact that he's not is 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 Biden taking a salary? Oh, you bet your ass. Uh, like I said, they already took what thirty three million or three hundred million from China. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are filthy. Just dirty and everybody knows it and he still gets a waltz around yep yep our gas prices are through the roof and we're selling oil to freaking china oh we're giving it to china yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's fucking crazy our our reserves we're giving them our reserves that's great that's freaking great you know and then we're selling a lot of land you know farmland we shouldn't they shouldn't be allowed to buy farmland on our on our country not at all you know, it's 30 miles away from a, uh, an Air Force base. Yep. Or maybe less than that. There's, there's, no, there's no security, you know. Uh, this, this idiot, Millie, you know, Colin told, told the, uh, one of the Chinese generals, I'll, I'll call you, tell you if we're going to attack. They should have pulled his ass out and shot him right there in front of everybody. He's a... Yep, set examples. Well, that's that's why you know that's why the drug cartels and Chinese are running you know drugs across the border like nobody's business because there is no examples. The only example is that they get away with it. Yeah, that's what they know. They know they can. So why would they do differently? Yep. I mean, what do you think? How do you think all this fentanyl and bullshit's getting in here? It's not an right. accident. Killing our killing our, our people come from China. Yep. You, you guys are depressing me. Do we have any positive questions to whatsoever? It's kind of going. I'm, I'm glad I don't have any sharp objects here right next to me <laughs> right now. Like going, this is depressing. Do we have any any more go. positive type questions? This is from Berserker Rage. <laughs> I'd like to know, um, in your guys' experience, if Gary Goodrich and Tank Abbott were to square up. In 97, who hit harder, who was physically stronger, and who do you think could have won between them? I think Tank hit harder, but Gary was physically stronger, absolutely. And uh, I think I think Gary would have won, as a matter of fact. I think like would have went the distance, or you could have bought. How do you think he would have won? Oh. It, of course, it would have went the distance. The, the distance against Tank is 30 seconds or 60 seconds, you know? After that, <laughs> ain't worth the shit. <laughs> uh, uh, great. <laughs> okay, but again, I, I, I'll be a little bit of the devil's advocate right now because, I mean, Tank Abbott has probably a greater amount of barroom brawls, though, Don, where, I mean, he just, he's, Probably has sucker punched a lot of people in the process, right. but it probably has, uh, you know, squared off with a number of other people, including his own buddies, just because he got he, he got his drunk on and, and just got a little bit pissed off and just basically just punched out one of his his own buddies here. I mean, you know, that's those kind of things that had you know he, he's got that reputation for that. So that the, I, I agree that I would say Gary would be a, a stronger individual overall, but I just think that the, uh, just the barroom fights that tank has been in, I think that would have given him a more of an edge in terms of for being in, in that fight scenario. Although Man, I have to disagree because okay. you, you have never been in a fight in your life, okay? <laughs> so a barroom fight usually lasts about 15 to 30 seconds, you know, and then that's it. It's over. 
I mean, they're not known for, for going the distance and going round around. Okay. All right. We're well, getting, I, I, I will defer. I will defer. Cause it's like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it just from one perspective and I'm trying to maybe analyze this a little bit too much as opposed to, you know, what's going to happen in the uh, barroom sector. So since we're on the topic of, uh, of tank, it says, this is from, from a guy named Don Simmons. So it's not fry. It says, Dan, the main reason I came here is to say thank you. Thank you for kicking the shit out of Tank Abbott. I hate that guy. And I'm a little behind on MMA. Just started watching this. People opt to fight most often, but uh, respect the quality of life of opponents is important. You demonstrate it as well. And you got revenge for so, for so many poor souls who suffered due to Tank Abbott. My heart goes out to their families and your true karma. Thank you again, sir. It's great to see you, Jocks. It's great to see Jocks with the brain. And all best to Don. You're awesome. You're an awesome man. Look at that. That's that just very, very complimentary type of a, a message that we received. It was, you know, and I, I know I've told that story before, and I'll, I'll bring you it again. That uh, first time I saw Tank Abbott, I saw him knock out. I kind of like, a, I think it was like a, a, a 300 pound sumo or whatever, it might have been a little bit more than that, with one punch. And as the man lay there, his body's involuntary, just stiffening up. He's doing that, you know, and we, we call it kind of like the funky chicken flop right there. And while he lay there helpless, that tank had the audacity to be just strike him again as he lay down there just defenseless. And when, when tank did that, I mean, I just thought, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, you, you son of a bitch. I can't believe you did that. And I go, if, if I should ever get the opportunity to have you in that cage, I go, evil will be got a greater evil. I could turn on things. I go, think that you don't even have a clue. And that's always to say, tell people that you call it that, that competitive spirit, call it whatever you want to. But uh, I mean, there's something when you walk out on that wrestling mat, there's something that when you climb into that cage, you have to have that belief in yourself or that spirit ab about yourself that you can you can do anything. You are Superman at that point in time. So. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was both. That was great seeing both of you beat the crap out of him. Definitely. Something about the mustache. I think they'll take now. Eh? He has a fear of mustache men now, you know? Yeah. That's right. Well, neither of you had any fear. So that's a big part. I think Fink, everybody was scared to tank. I think we're getting into a lot of people were getting in there. <laughs> You guys don't give two shits. Well, I mean, he, again, when you see him, that he's he's bench pressing. What was it like a four hundred pound uh, bench press with no uh, wraps or nothing like that uh, for for multiple reps? That's that actually that's rather impressive. Yeah. And Don Don took his best shot and then just knocked him out after. Well, several of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Don says, "I'm good. I'll show you what a real man can do." Yeah, and then so this is from Bill Carson says they don't get any tougher than Don. And then Amen he, on that one, Bill. Yep. And then he <laughs> goes through this is same Bill Carson again. This is for Dan. Five brothers, all two time state champs. God bless the severance. Well, there, there okay, there was the one that was a three timer, you oh, know. Yep. Was, oh, he he the, the the youngest one, Rod, was was the best of, of all the brothers. Uh, and I always say it's part of that trickle down when my oldest brother Dave went off to college and, and our, our these training camps, he brought back new techniques and tactics that uh, uh, I had never seen before or my younger brothers had not seen before. So then when, when I went off, the, the two of us would bring back new techniques and tactics. So it just helped with the, the youngest one, Rod, being the best. Everyone else averaged, uh, you know, averaged out two state, state titles. And then uh, Rod came along with with three, and even in his last match, I never never witnessed before this before. He basically just bear hugs his opponent right down and pins him. I, I've never seen someone go from a standing position just to a clinch, bear hug, and just bend the guy over his sheer power to his back and pin him. And that was that was it. So, Damn! In the state finals. Yes. Yes. Wow! Wow! wow. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> the funny the funny part was growing up. Rod's, Rod's uh, his nickname was Boomer. 
and I, well, I don't know how ever it came up with Boombrook, but basically he just always he lowered the boom. So <laughs> Rod was known as Boomer. Yes. <laughs> so this is from Gene says, I still watch in amazement the fights between Don and Mark Coleman. Don taking on a Goliath and pushing Mark to his limit. Don and Tank. Um, they would make Tyson sit up every time. I don't know who Tyson is. Wasn't many fighters that could rough up Mark Coleman or Tank besides Dan or Don. It's best is watching the beast put Tank down. Tank was a scary dude back then. And when Big John had to step in to help Tank from certain doom, you know these two are tough are two tough blokes. Uh, nice, nice compliments there, right there. Again, I don't know what more. I know we've, we've talked about yeah. uh, Tank previous and stuff like that. No, we appreciate uh, those fans, uh, you know, to to give us compliments. That's great. We like to get more questions from uh, fans, uh, especially uh, you know, uh, either things about what we have coming up or what uh, where they could see, you know, Don Fry next or where they where they could see. Uh, Don and I together uh, again because I know we're going to be taking the, the podcast more and more on the road as uh, Don gets healed up here and and so we're we're looking forward to we're looking forward to the future and and uh, toxic masculinity becoming even more toxic because you know we we know only one way of how to be and that's just being men. Thank you for watching another episode of Double D's in your face. You better like, subscribe, and share.